All right. This one is going to be on regret, the full version. So I'll get right into it. Now, when I was six and my brother was three years old, okay, we were uh, in the tub getting ready to have a bubble bath, you know, bath together. So our sitters said not to play around in the tub. Me being the big brother, I always wanted to, you know, make my brother laugh. So I was jumping around and fooling around in the tub, slipped, busted my mouth on the faucet. Crying, they walked in and then asked what happened because I was afraid of getting in trouble. I guess you know where I'm going at with this. I lied. And once you lie, one of the commandments, you've broken them all. At six years old, I did. Your opinion does not change that. I knew what I was doing at six years old when I chose to lie and say my brother pushed me. <sighs> He got punished for my lie. Now, fast forward, my brother, and I keep mixing up if he was 18 or 19 when he died, and I'm three years older, so 18 or 19. We used to sleep together as children, and when we we're in the bed, if one touched the other, you would elbow and say, you know, get away from me, you know, back up, you don't touch me. So during, remember I told you, I had the dream of his death two weeks before it happened. I told him two days before it happened. The day before it happened, we were sleeping in the same bed. This was the only time we have ever slept in the same bed for years. And I don't even know how we ended up laying next to each other. And instead of me getting up and going to my bed, and we just stayed there and fell asleep like we were kids. And we slept back to back, pressed against each other. And it was comforting. And I had this overwhelming desire to say, Dwayne, remember when we were kids? He may not even have remembered. But at the very moment that it happened, and he got his butt whooped, yeah, it did mean something then, and it did hurt him then. And it hurt my heart, but you know how selfish we are, better him than me. And that's how cruel a six-year-old was to his own brother. The one that said, you know, I yanked him up and slammed him against the wall when he told me he was gonna die young. I think God told him, and he accepted it. And when he mentioned that to me, I almost beat him up because I said, I'm your older brother. I'm going to die before you. You are going to bury me. I finally got through with that without, you know, shedding tears. But it still, still hurts a little because I, you know, I didn't want him to die before me, you know. But anyway, while we laid there, I had this desire to say, I'm sorry. I really wanted to apologize. That, my friends, was the nudging of the Spirit of God trying to lead you out of the path that you are currently on. I chose to ignore the nudging of the Spirit and kept my mouth shut. The very next morning, or not very day, next day, he died. The devil used that, and I internalized it and suffered for so many years for something so simple that I regret that I didn't say it. It may mean nothing to you, but I suffered through it. And I know that there are things that are of, of, of more value to others and of more, that's not the right word to say, but something of more meaning for other people because of your own circumstances and your own life story that you're holding on to those things. And I'm telling you and I'm pleading with you share this until the, the the reels wear out okay because it can help others 
to let go of this guilt because it's not your fault. It wasn't my fault, but the devil is the accuser of the brethren. His entire desire is to let us suffer. Suffering is of the devil, not of God. God says, I am here to give you peace and joy to the full. Nowhere in what God offers us have anything to do with suffering and pain. So get your story straight. Stop blaming God for bad things. We are the ones in this world that cause the bad things. Did God come down and run someone over? Have that drunk driver get into that accident? Told you to go to the bar and drink till you're wasted? No. It's our own desires that do that. So stop blaming God. But this regret thing, share it, let go of it, and forgive yourself. We are to forgive others, but don't you realize that we have to forgive ourselves too? Let it go. And what do I mean by forgiving ourselves? We cannot forgive our own sins. Don't misquote me. But accept that Jesus died and took all of that burden off you. Come to me, he said, right? Lay your burdens upon me. I'll take it. And in return, I'll give you my own burden. See, God is give, Jesus gives us burdens, but it's the burden of righteousness. Why is it a burden? Because it rubs others the wrong way when you are living righteous. You become an offense to others as the light and salt of the world. Someone shine a flashlight in your eyes, you're going to take offense. Someone sprinkle salt into your wound, you want to want to punch them in the face. So, again, please let this regret thing go. I don't remember how long it was, but I really suffered and I never told anyone. This is the first time. My mom always watches my videos, so she's going to hear this. But, um, but this is the purpose of helping others. Okay? let go of regret it's not your fault your family died it's not your fault person left you it's not it's not your fault we live in a fallen world so let it go i cannot stress this enough that you need to share this okay and let god give you his peace i'm guarantee you right now that once you listen to what i'm saying Accept Jesus into your life. Let it go. Ask him to take this burden from you. He will gladly do so. And you will feel his peace come upon you. Okay? I'm Pastor Rich. Walking Ministries Online. And I will see you soon.